Hello everybody. In today's video, I'll be making a leather journal cover for the Loistrom 1917A5 medium journal. The leather I'll be using is a dark brown oil tan pull-up leather that I purchased from Springfield Leather last fall during their Black Friday sale. If you're new to the channel, my name is Eric Adams and I've been a hobbyist leather worker since 2008. The majority of the products I make are leather gun holsters for concealed carry. I've made a few journal covers over the years, but this is the second time I've made anything with this particular design. A few days ago, I made a Bible cover for my youngest son, Zach. The pattern needed a few tweaks, so I took what I learned with that build and adapted it to the Loistrom 1917 journal insert that you're seeing in this video. So let's get to it. I started off by centering the journal's spine along the center of the paper, and then I traced its outline. I repeated this step by tracing the front and back faces of the journal. To determine the overall size of the leather cover, I offset my stitch line a quarter inch away from the journal outline. and then I offset another line roughly 3 16 away from the stitch line and that becomes the main body panel of the journal. The front and back covers of the journal slide into leather pockets. I'm making my pockets roughly two-thirds the width of the journal cover. This will help make sure the insert doesn't pop out of the cover accidentally when it's open too far. I've seen other journal covers incorporate a slot in the back pocket to accommodate the elastic strap. The idea is that you allow the strap to pass through the back pocket so it can still be utilized to keep the cover closed. I've never done this before, but it sounded like a good idea and I wanted to give it a try. Unfortunately, I didn't make my slot wide enough, and I had a hard time passing the strap through. In the end, the elastic wasn't really necessary since I have a leather closure strap to keep the cover closed. I ended up cutting the elastic off of my insert, but I did go back and revise the pattern so the elastic could be utilized if I ever wanted to make a cover without the leather closure strap. Speaking of the closure strap, that's what I'm drawing right now. This will be a strip of leather that I attach with copper rivets. It could be attached with speedy rivets, or even sewn in place if someone found those options easier. This piece will be the flap that attaches to the back cover and folds over and secures beneath the front strap. It will have two slots in it, roughly one inch wide, and that will form the pen holder. Off camera, I transferred the pattern into Adobe Illustrator. For the closure strap, I took the measurements from my son's Bible cover and made a few tweaks to the design, and then I made the dimensions match this journal cover. I will have the pattern available on my website if you're interested in making one for yourself. Since I'm making this journal cover for myself, I wanted to engrave my logo ridiculously large on the front cover. And since the leather is already inside the laser machine, I also used the laser to cut out the individual pieces of leather. And in case you're wondering, this does make a terrible mess on the face of the leather. The charred residue can be brushed away, but it takes several days for this burn smell to dissipate. I ended up washing the face of the leather with saddle soap, but I should have washed it prior to assembly instead of at the very end like I did in this video. Typically, you would want to apply masking tape to the surface, but that can tend to leave a sticky, burned residue behind that's sometimes hard to remove. Now I'm edging and burnishing the front and back edges of the single layer pieces. That would be the one exposed edge of each of the pocket pieces and the closure strap pieces. For edging, I'm using a size zero edger from Weaver Leather. I'm sanding the edge smooth with 800 grit wet dry automotive sandpaper. And then I'll slick the edge with gum tragicanth and a wooden burnisher.
Here I'm applying a mixture of oil and wax to the edge. I'm not really sure what to call this piece, but for now let's refer to it as the locking strip. I'm securing it with copper rivets. If you've never installed copper rivets before, they can be a huge pain to set properly. You really need a heavy, solid surface, like a thick granite slab, or better yet, an anvil or heavy steel bench block. My granite slab is too thin, and the only anvil I have is a really old bench vise that was passed down to me by my grandpa. But if you really want to learn to set copper rivets, there are several good videos on YouTube that show how to do it. But unfortunately, you still need the proper tools. I'm installing the closure strap between the body panel and the pocket panel. To help the contact cement adhere to the leather, I'm scuffing up the surface of the leather with a scratch awl. Now I'm applying contact cement to the outer edges of the pocket panels and the appropriate areas of the body panel and closure strap. The closure strap needs to overlap the stitch line enough that it will be securely attached once the pieces are sewn together. I marked the stitch with my adjustable creaser, then I basically doubled that distance and marked it with a marker. Then I squared the closure strap with the edge using my circle template as a makeshift square. Then I attached the pocket panels to the body panel being careful to align the edges as well as possible, and then I hammered the edges together to form a tighter bond. Trim the edges flush if necessary. Evidently, I forgot to hit the record button, but I used the circle template to round the corners, then trim them with my round knife. And now I'm beveling the edges with my size zero edger. To keep the edger from dragging on the table, I'm propping up the journal cover on a scrap piece of leather. Again with the record button, I somehow managed to not record the section where I punched the stitch holes in the leather. I used a 5mm diamond stitching chisel from Weaver Leather to punch the holes, and now I'm sewing it together with orange nylon thread. I sanded the edges smooth with 800 grit sandpaper and then burnished with gum tragicanth and wax. The majority of products I make are all made with vegetable tanned leather. I have a pretty good process for burnishing the edges, but I'll be honest and admit I'm still learning how to get a good polished edge on oil tanned leather. If you have a good process, I'd love to hear your process in the comments down below.
I mentioned earlier in the video about the elastic strap slot not being long enough. This is where I realized my mistake for the first time. I can't tell you how much it's going to annoy me having that useless slot in the leather, but hey, it's not my first mistake and it certainly won't be my last. Maybe I'll engrave measure once cut twice next to it. And while we're talking about mistakes, I might as well mention again that I should have cleaned the leather with saddle soap prior to assembly. This made a mess. Mistakes aside, I hope you enjoyed the video. In the rush of keeping up with orders, I don't often get to make stuff for myself. But to be perfectly honest, I'm like a kid with a new toy. I just can't stop looking at this thing. I'm happy with the way it came out. I'll be making another one with a slightly different design, but it'll most likely be for the moleskin insert. That one will be for my wife. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And check out my website at adamsleatherworks.com for patterns, templates, leather holsters, and other cool stuff. Take care, and see you later.